Here's a recent upload from Flatsoid, so let's take a listen as he explains how perspective works with overhead objects. If you clicked onto this, you're wondering what I'm showing you right now. Well, it's very simple. You see those spacings are exactly the same between the first three blocks. As I move away, what is happening to the angles? Are they having an apparent compression? Are they physically moving towards each other? Or are they just apparently compressing to one another? Well, since perspective is based on the actual sizes and distances of objects, I'm going to use a scale orthographic view to see if what Flatsoid says is correct. And this definitely shows that the angles to the four rectangles on the right are definitely narrower. Does it change the physical height of those bars? No. Like I said, this is a scale orthographic view. It just changes the apparent angular altitude based on the observer's angle, because perspective. And this orthographic view shows exactly why we see this. The physical distance I move is exactly the same. Nothing has gone incrementally wrong. The only thing that you observe is three-dimensional space. Here's a measurement showing that the spacing is the same. And again, this orthographic view shows exactly how perspective works. Now obviously this also works when we see a jet fly overhead. It is the largest one directly overhead and then it appears smaller and lower as it flies off into the distance. So far, Flatsoid has given a very good demonstration about how perspective works with overhead objects that are farther in the distance. But another thing to consider is that when you see an object moving away from you overhead, it is fastest when directly overhead, and then it appears to go slower and slower as it gets farther away due to that compression effect. The spacings between the luminaries. This is why when we observe Polaris and we move away, it has an apparent arc. So does this really work for the stars as we see them pass overhead and then head down towards the horizon? Now Orion is a very familiar constellation in the night sky and it's quite easy to find because of the three stars that make up the belt. And this is what the main body of Orion looks like when it is directly overhead. Now I've also seen Orion near the horizon on many occasions and its shape has not changed. But if Flatsoid is correct and the stars actually do set due to perspective then Orion should look more like this. And I have never seen this happen with any star constellation. So here's a time lapse of stars in the night sky. And look at the stars on the right. None of those stars are getting any closer together. They are moving down to the horizon at the same speed. What is happening to the angles? Are they having an apparent compression? Are they physically moving towards each other? Or are they just apparently compressing to one another. Well, what I see is stars moving down to the horizon at the same speed. Absolutely no compression. And here's something you should think about. Do these stars stop moving down when they reach the horizon? Absolutely not. They continue on that same path below the horizon. Why would we see this if the Earth was flat? And what about the sun? Because flat earthers say the sun sets due to the laws of perspective, just like a row of streetlights going off into the distance. Here's a sunset time lapse that I took in Bangkok with my P900. The camera takes a series of photos for 50 minutes and turns it into a 10 second video. So I started this time lapse right after the first one ended and you can see that the sun is moving the same distance across the sky. Now I tried to do a third time lapse, but unfortunately the clouds started coming in and it just got too dark for us to see anything at the end. But here's a time lapse of sunrise and I got the sun just when it appeared above that building. And here's the second time lapse and again you can see that the sun is moving the same distance across the sky. Where is the compression? So just like we saw with that video of stars, the motion of the sun does not compress as it gets closer to the horizon. 
And this is why Glober came up with the word perspective. Because if the sun and the stars are what the flat earthers like to call the luminaries, were on actual paths that were parallel above the surface of the flat earth, then when we see them move away, they should conform to the laws of linear perspective. And we don't see that. And again, does anyone really think that the sun is just going to stop or change direction at the horizon? This is not rocket science. It's going to continue along that same path at the same speed below the horizon as it returns to the east to rise again in the morning. So flatzoid is wrong. Observed evidence shows us that we do not see the sun nor the stars move off into the distance and compress together like we see with a row of streetlights. And that's because they are not setting due to perspective. But Flatsoid has certainly become one of the leading Flat Earth perspective experts. Of course, the real question is, is when are Flat Earthers going to give some serious critical thought to observations of the world around them?